Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher and welcome to All About Canadian Books. Today, today we are going to get to know author John Peyton Foden. Today's interview will be a series of 10 quick questions and this will be followed up Thursday, March the 10th with a behind the book chat about his debut novel. Can you see it there? Magenta. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce John Peyton Foden. Um, he is a Toronto-based writer, and for the past 30 years, he's been paying the bills and keeping the lights on by wearing a suit and tie as a consultant lobbyist. His work with municipal government officials from around the world has inspired a fascination with the nature of our communities the fragility of the relationship that sustain them and the, our collective vulnerability in the face of powerful natural and man-made forces, including war and climate change. Magenta is his first novel and it was published by Crow's Nest Books. Welcome, John, good morning. Good morning, thank you for having me. It's my absolute pleasure. Are you ready for these quick 10 questions? Yeah, I am. I think All so. All right. Okay, so viewers, fasten your seatbelts. So, John, what's your preference, summer or winter Olympics? Well, I'm going to start uh, off by standing on the fence. I think <laughs> I personally enjoy uh, the Summer Olympics. I don't know something about, I think maybe that the, the events are, most of the events are more familiar to me, but I, one of my assignments when I was uh, a lobbyist was, uh, uh, was working on an Olympic campaign for Quebec City. Mm -hmm. uh, we were doing the campaign in the middle of the separat separation um, debate. In, uh, and so we weren't uh, lucky enough to win, but I feel sort of an affinity to those games. And uh, I would have liked to see them go to Quebec City. Would have been a good host. They certainly would have been. Yeah. Um, important question here. Are you a Blue Jays fan? Uh, there are two seasons in our house, baseball season and <laughs> Christmas morning. Um, and uh, it is uh, all blue and white uh, all the time, <laughs> which for me is a bit of a, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I grew up an Orioles fan. I mean, ah. by heart Orioles fan. Yeah. And uh, so it took me a few years to make the conversion. But once we made the conversion, my wife, both my kids love baseball. So yeah, Blue Jays all the way. All right. <laughs> and um, what position do you play in baseball, John? When I played, I was a catcher. Nice. And I got oh to see God. the field. Yeah. That's very brave of you because those balls come pretty fast. Behind the <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some faster than others. I, I had uh, most of the time when I played, you know, you, you, you kind of like a goldfish, right? You grow to the size of the bowl you're in. Yeah. And um, but I went to the States and we had a kid on our team who could throw almost 100 miles an hour. And you realize, oh, my goodness, this is a whole different kettle of fish it, um, because yeah. it doesn't come at you just a little bit faster. It's uh, it's like measuring an earthquake, right? You know how earthquakes are exponentially yeah. graded? Yeah. Uh, yeah. When you get up to that kind of speed, it comes on you in a hurry. It's fast. And I mean, and how are your knees after being a catcher? Well, I am paying the price now. <laughs> <laughs> um, John, you've had a really interesting career. What would be a career highlight? Um, if we were talking baseball, uh, I was sort of this unknown Canadian. I went to a, a major league tryout camp. Uh, there was a scout there who invited me to go to their college. Yeah. Uh, I was I'm definitely an unknown. It wasn't widely recruited, but I ended up winning an all-state and all-conference award um, after uh, after two years. So I was, yeah, I mean, it was pretty exciting then at the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in, in terms of baseball, that would be that would be my highlight. Watching my son play. Um, he, he's really quite good as well. But. Yeah. And also you coach baseball. How many years have you coached baseball? Well, I've been around the field since I was like seven or eight. So many years. Um, it's um, after I finished playing, which was sort of in my mid 20s. Um, I, I coached uh, or managed a semi pro team in Hamilton. Mm. And around that time, one of my college teammates started playing in the major leagues. Oh. 
Wow. And I stopped watching baseball that day because, you know, he had my dream right to that point in my life. And so there was, uh, I don't think there was anything conscious about it, um, but I stopped watching for a while. Um, and then uh, when my son was born, it was always, you know, again, it was baseball all the time with him. So, you know, there was another 20 years spent in the car and driving, and coaching and teaching and not a minute wasted, though. No, no. Um, what is the most memorable public policy that you've worked on? Well, I guess I'm going to do it to you again. I have two. Uh, okay. First would be the Olympic campaign for yes. Quebec. It yes. was uh, it was exciting. It's a different world. Um, uh, you know, it's uh, uh, it's very political, um, and uh, you know, it was a, it's a different city. And, uh, you know, different parts of Canada, there was a lot of travel involved. The second public policy file was uh, I represented a coalition of companies who wanted to build energy from waste plants. Uh, and we were successful in getting one built uh, here in Ontario, just uh, uh, what, east of Toronto. Uh, so that was a success. And I think we started with none. Uh, we had 14 projects on the go by the time uh, we closed the assignment down. So it's, um, it was, and there was a lot of travel, a lot of appearances, got to see a lot of places in the States and got to go to Europe maybe once a year. Um, so, you know, those are little things, but you know, they, they make the assignment a little bit more interesting. Oh yeah. How often in a, in a given day would you say that you watch or listen to the news? Um, it's less now. Yeah. Um, well, in, in part, you know, when you are a very active lobbyist, it's, it's your lifeblood, right? You yeah. have to stay so close to it. Uh, now that I write uh, more, um, I worry less about the wider world, um, more about bigger issues. I, uh, I spend, uh, I think my reading is more in depth now. Yeah. And I have two adult children and a, a, um, a, um, a professional and, um, and keenly interested wife, so they keep me up on the issues of the day as well. Right. Um, what would you like your legacy to be? Uh, I would like it to be more than just Magenta. Um, <laughs> the book that follows Magenta is called Celestial, and it is the centerpiece in a, uh, a series of books. It's not linear, yeah. Uh, but it's a universe as opposed to uh, uh, a one character you follow all the way. So in this, it, Nadia, for instance, in Magenta, yeah. uh, she is a character in the next one and she's a oh. character in the one after that. So oh. she's important in this one, she's important in the next one, but she isn't the key character in any of them. But that's how I'm trying to connect these different stories. So Magenta is the first published novel. I have two other books finished looking for a home. Yes. Uh, but my legacy, I hope, is that this beautiful, uh, vibrant universe of interesting characters, that's what I hope it's going to be. Oh, that's exciting. That's really exciting. Um, what did you learn about yourself? Like Magenta is your debut novel. So what did you learn about yourself when you were writing it? Uh, I think the two primary things I learned is that I love it. I love everything about it. I love the yeah. process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There wasn't a day that I did. I wasn't excited to get to work to, oh. to finish this thing up. Um, and I think the second thing you get to the end, and especially after working with an editor as good as Jane Warren, uh, you come out the other end, you're, you know, I'm pretty good at this, you know, because I'm very proud of that, that book. And um, she had a lot to do with it. She's, um, she's very, um, very talented and uh, she's got as they say in hockey circles a really nice touch around the net she wants you to change something yeah. and she's patient and she nudges and <laughs> she, gets you, she gets you where you need to be uh, and that part of the process was uh, was wonderful as well so yeah. it's uh, it's those things and so when it all comes together you realize this is my passion this is yeah. what I uh, it's not just a hobby uh, I'm not, you know, I'm wired to do this. And, uh, and so hopefully um, we get to do it again and again. So what I learned is I love it and I'm pretty good at it. Oh, that's what, what a wonderful thing to learn. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I wish you much success in, in continuing. That's exciting. Yeah. Ready for the last and another very, very, very important question. Mm -hmm. Do you write with the music on or is it in silence? 
Um, there is a voice in my head and I have to pay attention. So it is uh, more or less complete silence, yeah. unless it's a call for dinner yeah. uh, <laughs> um, or the cat is hungry. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I find um, music. Um, I, okay. I have had uh, two instances where people have told me my mother in particular, I couldn't hold a tune if it had handles. Um, I had a girlfriend a long, long time ago who told me that when I sing, her eyes hurt. So oh. <laughs> not what she's called a music. And, and I hope that the language I use is, uh, you know, has a tendency to be melodic and, and, and musical as well. So it is, no, it is dead silence because I have to listen to that voice in my head. Yeah. It's, um, because it's not just keeping magenta straight, it's keeping magenta straight with everything else that I'm hoping to produce. Yeah, okay. I'm still smiling at that her eyes comment. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine when I heard that for the first time. It can't be that bad, but yeah. yeah. My kids laugh. They, you know, they, if we're, they're singing carols and we all sort of, if we're in the mood, they'll yes. stop singing just so I have to finish that note and they all laugh. They think it's hysterical. Or my wife will, will um, she'll, my daughter doesn't in particular, my daughter's a lovely singer. My mother was a beautiful singer, so it definitely skipped a generation. She'll hit a note and she'll say, dad, hit this note. And so I'll give it a go. And you know, they just can't believe I can be that bad. So. Well, you know, John, you can't be good at everything. So <laughs> thank you so much for um, for answering these maybe a little more than 10 questions. And viewers, I hope you have a better idea of who um, author John Bowden is. Thank you for watching. Thank you, John, for answering. Oh, really appreciate my it. Yeah, my pleasure. And viewers, be sure that you subscribe to my channel and also be sure to return on Thursday, March 10th, because John will be back and we will be talking about, I'll show it again there, his debut novel, Magenta, and it's a fantastic read. Thank you for watching. It's a pleasure to be here. Yay! <laughs>